Hi guys, JRK Reviews here, and I'm back. And today I'm going to be doing another collection update. And this collection update is going to be things from Christmas, um, January, and February because I picked up some recent stuff. Um, so we've got um, a few magazines, a uh, uh, few DVDs. And even some books as well uh, that I picked up and I don't even read. So the background is actually going to be updated for like the first time in three years. Even longer probably. Um, so as usual, first we'll just start off with the comics. And there's only one this week and it is The Third Doctor, Issue 4. Uh, I decided to opt for this cover with The Second Doctor and the Third Doctor on. Um, as I don't really like any of the Issue 4 covers. Um, but this one I just thought might as well uh, get this one because it's got uh, both men on it. Um, and I also picked up this, uh, the February edition of Doctor Who magazine. And well, I think this did come out in January actually. And it was the 70s issue and excellent issue. Um, absolutely love the cover with Katie Manning and Mark Gattis on the back, Diary of a Song 2. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got a comic with a rarely surprising ending um, in it, um, some stuff on Gallifrey, uh, more interviews, um, flip through, what was the bit that I really loved, there's a, really, there a bit on merch, ah here it is, the merchandise, and I absolutely love merchandise of course, um, so that that's a really fun flick through to read, um, and there's a fantastic little piece on the Breaking of Morbius as well. Um, because this is a 70s um, issue and it didn't go for the obvious choice of like Genesis of the Daleks or City of Death. It's on the Brain of Morbius and the Brain of Morbius sums up the 70s era very well but you wouldn't really think it. Um, so it, was, it wasn't an obvious choice and you know I'm kind of glad that they've done that. And it also comes with um, the reprint of the TV action countdown. Um, with the Daleks and the Third Doctor on the back is just an a is just an advertisement for the Panini book uh, reprints as uh, Nemesis of the Daleks. I think it's just been recently reprinted as well because that was quite hard to get. Um, and really fun little issue. Um, let's see, there's the Daleks in there. Um, there's a, it's like a yellow and black Supreme in this one. Uh, as you can see there at the top. So yeah, as a big comic book collector, this is what really got me to um, get this week's doc this month's Doctor Who magazine. Um, because, you know, it's all about the 70s with John Pertwee and Tom Baker. I'm really in a big John Pertwee mood at the moment. And yeah, um, just really solid issue. I really recommend it. And the uh, reprint of the uh, comic strip really um, sells it for you. Um, and now for Christmas, uh, which Christmas feels like ages away, I also did get a few older Doctor Who magazines, not old, but um, it's I got this one, which is, uh, this was in 2012, this was issue 444, uh, 7th of March 2012, um, and this, you know, it's all about um, lost stories and Sharda, and, you know, I really love the cover with Bill Hartnell on there. And these issues are really interesting because they're all from around 2012. And I wasn't really... I sort of fell out with Doctor Who around then. Um, and, oh, God, you can see how old this is. <laughs> um, advertisement, 8th Doctor Adventures. Um, series 4, I love that poster. Uh, there's even, I think there's one for um, Curse of the Darks in here. But um, it's just really interesting because this is the sort of the era of Doctor Who... That I missed, really. Um, I, I did watch Doctor Who when it was on, but I wasn't really that interested in it. You know, I've been a massive Doctor Who fan ever since I was three years old. But, um, you know, uh, it I, I just ran a little dry for me. Yeah, and there's uh, the Lucy Greenwood trilogy. Um, there. Um, so, so, yeah, it's the era of Doctor Who I really missed, um, to be honest. And this, the next one is from 8th of February 2012. Uh, it's Terror of the Zygons. Um, two covers to collect. I cannot remember what the other one was. Um, and, it's all about, and it's got about Galaxy 4 on there as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just really nice to get these. And the final one 
I was actually really, really glad that I got this one. And it is, oops, um, it is the Dark Eyes issue. Paul McGann is the Dark Doctor. Um, I really need to, uh, there we go. And it, what's interesting in this one is I do media in college. And obviously it uses a lot of Photoshop for creating magazines. And we had to um, create a magazine to sort of just see how we are with Photoshop. And I used this cover as sort of like a base for uh, as a base for Dark Eyes 8th Doctor issue. And it did turn out really well. Um, so yeah, it's very weird that I actually ended up with this one. So yeah, um, those Doctor Who magazines. Um, next I got uh, the creator set. Um, because it went to £10, and I, I was like, you know, just, might as well just get this, because, um, it's gonna go out of print soon. Um, he's got his cane there, which I think is backwards, that's backwards, <laughs> I'm not sure how it's ended up like that. Um, but, there we go. Um, the face, it's, it's alright. Um, I've got a bit of a black spot there, but it's not very noticeable. Um, sorry if my fingers are red, I've literally just got in it's freezing outside um and yeah the sculpt it is all right um could like it was a good sculpt it was just the paint hats are too thick but and it uses the trousers from the uh standard fourth doctor as well so yeah um the creator is a really really nice figure um i kept the uh painting in the box um because you know once you've just got the loose painting you know, what are you supposed to do with that, really? So, yeah, that just sort of stays in the box. And we've got a few DVDs here. Uh, one, two, got six DVDs. Um, and for Christmas, I really wanted to finish my Patrick Trouton collection. And I've done so with The Underwater Menace. Um, this was actually the last one I opened, I think. Um, so, yeah, The Underwater Menace was my final Patrick Trouton DVD. Um, so I've rarely got them all now. Um... Hopefully we'll get Evil of the Daleks, um, but you know, after the shoddy animation that's power, you know, <laughs> don't bother to be very frank, but um, yeah, I, it is the first Doctor I've completed for DVDs, um, probably because he's the easiest. Uh, the Moon Base next. Um, I already watched the animation on Day of the Motion, but um, that's why I sort of refrained from buying it for a long time. Um, next, The Dominators. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to watching this one because it's just silly fun, isn't it? Uh, the Crotons. Um, this is one I'm looking forward to watching uh, as well, um, even though they're not supposed to be the best stories. And yeah, that is the reason why I did get these last, because they're not really considered the best. Um, this one, I'm just going to go over quick because I forgot to feature this one in my last collection update and I got this at the start of November. Um, it's Enemy of the World. Um, every, you know, everyone knows, like loads of people know I've got this, so I'm just gonna skip ahead. And uh, what I got in January was the Ambassadors of Death with John Pertwee. Yeah, because uh, John Pertwee this year I'm looking to complete his Doctor. Um, so I'm on a mission uh to complete the DVD collection definitely. Um, so yeah, those are the DVDs that I got. Um, and yeah, next we will move on to the books that I got. Pick them up. Yeah. So here we have four Eighth Doctor Adventures and a Virgin, uh, just a Virgin book, uh, because it's not a part of any series. Um, now with this Eighth Doctor bundle um, of four, I only wanted one of these, and it usually goes for about six, seven pounds, and this bundle was for seven pounds. So I thought, you know. It, uh, even though the other three books aren't really the best, you know, the more the merrier of a Doctor Who, isn't it? Um, so the the spare three that I've got was Demontage, or Demontage, I'm not sure how this is pronounced, um, which, it's a bit of a crappy cover, to be honest, um, but it's actually supposed to be uh, an, an okay story, um, it's supposed to be quite dark, this one, and um, it is a very classic 90s cover, um, that is quite recognisable. The next one, very colourful, Revolution Man. Uh, this one is set in the 60s, and this one's supposed to be a bit of a, uh, sort of surprising, um, you know, pretty alright story. And it's supposed to be quite dark as well, it's with, um, Fitz and Sam, um, in 1967, 68 and 69, I believe. So, um, yeah, you're actually going to see these next to these in future videos. 
Um, the next one, uh, Dominion. Rather boring cover, to be quite frank, but um, Dominion uh, is... This is where Sam gets lost. I'm not sure if this starts the Lost Sam arc off. However, um, uh, she definitely does uh, get lost in this one. Uh, and that's what the Doctor and Fitz to find her. And this is the one that I actually wanted. I've wanted this one for quite some time, actually, but never just got round to um, buying it. And it is the controversial Unnatural History. Unnatural History is a part of an arc uh, that started in Alien Bodies, uh, referenced very, very slightly in two, so that in two other books that are not really needed to read. But this is really where the faction paradox really come into it. They were in Alien Bodies, however, this one um, is um, you can you can read this on its own because it's not that crucial and it is nearing the end of Sam's run as well. And I really wanted this one because this one is dark and I love dark dark stories. So uh, I really really want to pick this up because the Doctor's accidentally changed Sam's life and so she's now got dark hair. Um, living on, uh, living very roughly, semi somewhat drug addict. So that's really why I wanted to buy it, and I really love the cover. This is one of my favourite EDA covers. Um, I absolutely love this cover. So yeah, um, those were the four EDAs that I got. And the final book today is a rev is a somewhat rare virgin book. It goes to about forty average pounds on Amazon. Um, quite expensive, brand new. Um, but. It's not really part of either range, however, it's considered to be a missing adventure. Um, and it is Who Killed Kennedy? Uh, now, Who Killed Kennedy is a very interesting Doctor Who book because it's essentially the biggest continuity wank ever. You know, it, whenever there's a plot hole in Classic Who, you know, Who Killed Kennedy fixes it. Um, so there's, like, what, what really bugged me in Ambassadors of Death is... Um, the fact that they get to Mars and back very, very quickly. However, Who Killed Kennedy comes along and it says, well, they use the technology from Electromatic Industries in order to create the shuttles. Electromatic Industries was the company run by Tobias Vaughan in the invasion. So, yeah, um, it's a nice little plot thread um, that's carried over. And Who Killed Kennedy, it's got some really dark stuff like Dodo. They do some really dark stuff with Dodo in this book, like from, you know, Dodo from the Will Hartle era. Um, you know, and it's very controversial for that fact, but it is supposed to be very good. Um, like the, um, the, the masters manipulating events and, um, you know, the, um, JFK, um, it's all about how w the, the truth of actually what happened. Um, like, because it, it's, it is written like a mad conspiracy book on first person and the main character is a journalist who was in the room of, uh, in the mind of evil, um, when the machine was turned on, um, but yeah, it's just a big, massive continuity, right, like, war with Russia, it's just got loads of stuff, and, um, I, I'm really looking forward to continue it. I've re continuing it, I've read the prologue, and it's just a really good, about 15 page long prologue, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading Who Killed Kennedy. So, this concludes this collection update, and, uh, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and there is sure more to come. And yeah, uh, th yeah, I th trying to fit all this on because you know it is a lot of uh, uh, stuff for this week, uh, for this month actually. Um, but yeah, um, hope you've enjoyed. Next video will come whenever it does. And yeah, I will see you then. Goodbye.